the senator, while indoctrinated, could not explain his toxicity. BBS, this just in. An entire battalion of weaponized misogynists will be descending on hapless Chicago to forcefully fondle the city's innocence. With them are notorious fascist pug handler Count Dankula, rape joke enabler Sargon of ACAD, alt-right menace Mr. Reagan, Satan himself Paul Elam, and the devil's handmaid Karen Strong. We have just received word from an expert in hateology that if you even so much as look upon this conference, your eyes will be burned out of your skull, your tongue will invert, and your anus will seed from the union. We repeat, do not so much as glance at this convention and its related paraphernalia of evil. Hello, 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 everyone, and welcome to Honey Badger Radio. This is HBR News number 216, 216 episodes. Feminists cry out in pain as they try and destroy you, where we reflect on the stories of the week and give it the badger treatment. Uhuru, y'all, and welcome to Honey Badger Radio. I am your host, Brian, and I am joined by, as always, my esteemed panelists, Hannah and the two mics. We have a great show lined up. Uhuru, y'all. Uhuru. We have a great show lined up for you guys today, so please be sure to continue the conversations both in the chat as well as the comments section. On this week's HBR News Show, we're going to be talking about the honks of the week, which include a weeping false accuser who works at a law firm, the fate of journalist Andy Ngo, the Twitch streamer who lost her sponsor for uh, comments on men, and more. So stick around, it's going to be a good time. This week, there will not be an after show, however, uh, because we're a little bit under the gun. You may have noticed, if you're subscribed to Girl Writes What, that there will be an interview with Count Dankula a little bit later today. So I'm going to be uh, hosting that call as well. So as soon as the HBR News show is over, maybe head over to Girl Writes What's channel or Karen Strong's channel and hang out there as we talk with Count Dankula. But don't let that stop you from becoming a badger yourself by going to feedthebadger.com to support us uh, we we do still have a patreon presence but we're trying to unplug from patreon completely because they're run by soy boys so if you could just go to feedthebadger.com and set up a monthly subscription and also if you don't want to wake up one morning to find yourself unable to find our content because youtube and the rest of silicon valley f finally dropped the axe on our internet presence go to badgerfeed.com that's badgerfeed.com. So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get into the stories of the week. Should be a fun time. So first things first, woman faces jail time for falsely accusing Cabby of raping her. Laura Hood, that's, that's her name, not her attitude, took a cab ride home one evening after partying. She claimed that Mr. Yusuf, her cab driver, raped her in the back seat of his cab. Oof. After Yusuf was accused, he was detained for nearly 20 hours and provided samples to police investigators. He was later released without being charged. His GPS on his cab showed that he had not stopped at any point from picking up Hood up to dropping her off at her home. Mr. Yusuf said in a statement that, quote, this still affects me in my day-to-day -day life and I don't know if I will ever come back fully from this. Before this incident, I was a strong person. However, I'm now negative and worried that things can go wrong. This is the most disgusting thing that anyone can be accused of. When I pick up single female passengers, I always worry that something could happen again. I had to take my clothes off in front of a stranger. I had tears in my eyes. I don't think this female really understands what she has done and how it has affected my life. Hood broke down in tears in the courtroom after the verdict. She said that, quote, I wish I could explain why something is so clear in my head, but obviously can't be true. I accept that there's no psychiatric evidence to explain why I believe this to have happened. I went to the psychiatrist on two occasions. It was clear as day. What I said in the interview is what I believe to have happened. I wish I could explain it. I wish the psychiatrist could have helped me. I don't know how something can be so clear in my head, but the evidence said it didn't happen. 
All right. Uh, does anyone have any thoughts on that story? I it's bad it's, it's, it's white female versus kind of Middle Eastern sounding name male. <laughs> Who will win? Yeah. Let's see your bets now. <laughs> It's bad enough to lie about something like that. I mean, that's 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 really awful to have lied about it in the first place. But to pretend to be nuts rather than admit that you lied. Um, geez, Pete, if I was the judge, I would throw the book at this woman because that is absolutely malicious. Mm-hmm. Like to play victim of getting caught in your own lie. I uh, honestly, I, I think this guy is being really charitable when he says that he doesn't think she understands what she did to him. She works in a law firm and she's pretending to be crazy to get out of admitting what she did. She knows. Absolutely. Like this is this is the classic plot of a um, of a Kirby Your Enthusiasm episode. Uh, the idea is it all evolves from one lie that uh, that a character tells and it all sort of tumbles into extra lies from there on in. Mm-hmm. But but it's come to it's come to life here in a somewhat less comical way. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I, I have the most horrible feeling they'll be doing sitcoms about this kind of thing in <laughs> twenty years from now. Oh God, maybe they will. Oh it's uh, possible. You know what I it's I, possible. What I wanna know is what what for what reason would she have made this accusation like did they just not get along because according to his gps he took her to her destination dropped her off no no you know he didn't stop at any point or anything so why would she then turn around and accuse him that's what i don't like i don't sense a motive for the false accusation i don't see a clear one so maybe she does have problems may i mean i don't know you know well they didn't give one in the story did they like the original story um, and I, that makes me wonder, it's possible that she used a lie to, uh, explain away where she had gone and things like that to somebody, uh, women who lie about rape. There was an article about this. They lie to, well, she was uh, drinking explain away going someplace. They lie to explain away. Yeah. Drinking might've been another thing. She might've lied to explain away, uh, being, being drunk or to not have to deal with, questions from somebody that she lived with about how much she'd had to drink she might have lied because she was mad about the bill uh she might have lied for attention there are women who make false rape accusations for attention yeah that is uh... so i mean and if they get enough of it they end up on any major radio news (laughs) yep yeah, I don't see anything except that she was drinking. And uh, I guess she must have been pretty wasted if she took a cab home. Uh, because he was a cab driver, right? So, yeah, hard to say. I don't know. I don't. I guess I I just thought it was interesting that a person who works in law enforcement, or I'm sorry, in the legal system. Um, actually did that. Yeah, would actually have done that. You know, so... You know, it's it happens so often. Uh, cabbies in Ireland have actually all installed cameras in there. And like, if you go into the the forums that Uber drivers use to sort of talk about how they handle difficulties and things, um, that's one of the big suggestions there too. Is make sure you have a camera. And I think Uber actually has told them now that they're not allowed. Mm-hmm. So like when it comes to when it comes to surveillance culture, when it comes to that area of Big Brother, you 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 can f- fight them by joining them, like yep. because everyone can have their own camera now. So just be the be your own surveillance culture. There's nothing stopping you. Well, there is. They they could they could steal your GoPro and then batter you about the head and throw quick grind cement on your shower. But but good luck. Yeah. All right. Well, you guys let us know what you think about this story. Uh, it's just a short one to open us up. It's it's just the appetizer. We're going to get into the uh, the main course. Speaking of false accusers, uh, let's move on to the next story. <laughs> this is a good one. You guys have heard. Um, you've seen this one making the rounds. I did a story. We did this as an after show. Uh, we didn't even get through the whole thing. It was just so hilariously bad. But it turns out that this turned out to be a bigger topic for people during the course of the week. So I guess we're going to get into it. 
So, you may have seen new sexual assault allegation against Trump by American journalist and advice columnist E. Jean Carroll. The assault apparently occurred sometime in the 1990s in a high-end New York department store dressing room. What you may not know, and what I've noticed mainstream media reporting has left out, is the story comes from her new book. This is a book entitled, quote, What Do We Need Men For? A Modest Proposal. End quote. The number one new release in feminist theory on Amazon. That's correct. I just want to say one thing really quick. From what we read of of that story last time, there was nothing modest about it. That's it. You're fascinating to talk to, Hannah. Just fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, even though... The book is advertised, quote, as seen on the cover of New York Magazine and in the breaking news story about Donald Trump, end quote. At least one journalist thinks the story has been underreported. <laughs> she was on fucking CNN and she's selling her book. And like, it's just, it's, it's, this is insane. But okay, let's move Again, on. Again, folks, be, be grateful that you live in a country where a woman can go on network television and accuse the president of rape. And she doesn't get arrested. She doesn't even get a telling off. That's a free country, motherfucker. Mm -hmm. We could not do that here. We absolutely could not do that here. No, 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 no. Um, in the Atlantic article, what E. Jean Carroll means for hashtag me too, author Sophie Gilbert claims that the allegation story, quote, seemed almost to have evaporated into the ether, end quote. It wasn't mentioned on the front page of the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, or the Los Angeles Times. The New York Times included a, a write-up in its book section, which felt so belittling to Carroll and to its female readers. I wonder if it is as belittling as writing a book questioning why we need women, but without batting an eye, Gilbert cites National Women's Law Center president and CEO Fatima Ghost Graves' sentiment that these allegations bring a, quote, or bring an, quote, opportunity for public cultural reckoning with toxic masculinity, with misogyny, with harassment, and with sexual violence, end quote. E. Jean Carroll did appear on CNN and did not want to call her allegation a rape because most people think of rape as being sexy, end quote. And as pointed out by some, including Summit News, that's Paul Joseph Watson's news site, her story is very similar to a plot line from an episode of Law & Order SVU, yes, like, too similar, where a suspect being questioned says, quote, it took place in the dressing room of Bergdorf while she was trying on lingerie. I would burst in. Yeah, so... Uh, <laughs> this, this woman is insane. Look at this. Trump, did, did Trump harass that? Have you seen his wife? But anyway, uh, any thoughts on this, uh, in this story? Also, false allegations almost never happen. 2%. 2% of the time, guys. Very rare. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm amazed this hasn't happened more often. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Mike, Jay. I'm, uh, I'm kind of almost wanting to believe this one theory that's floating around that she was actually paid opposition to uh, make the accusers that are no doubt going to surface during the 2020 election seem even less credible because we're going to keep circling back to this crazy woman. Mm. But that's that, a little, uh, that's a little 4d chess for you there. Yeah, yeah. That's a, that's a bit of a stretch. I mean, based on uh, what I'm seeing here and, um, her her uh, performance, as it were, on CNN. Um, I think that that's a real thing. Like she's a real person, and that was a real thing that happened. That uh, you know, CNN wasn't ready for. So, but Given Look, I, th th there's a noticeable difference between a a, a psychopath and um, and a liar, <laughs> a, a sort of a, um, pathological liar. Uh, psychopaths tell lies and and they know they're telling lies and they don't care but pathological lies will actually climb inside the lie and they will actually start believing it <laughs> mm -hmm. sometimes it's it's a very scary thing that people do 
But I'm telling you guys, that fish was like two feet long. Um, no, <laughs> seriously, this <laughs> I, I I don't think that uh, they have anything to worry about in terms of accusers being credible and and the use of of false accusations of sexual misconduct in in the political arena at this point, simply because at this point, I think the public probably has uh, sexual misconduct allegation fatigue because the the first Trump election has gone, you know, like the whole election, it was constantly all about mm-hmm. grab them by the pussy, grab them by the pussy, which was Trump basically admitting that rich guys do know that many, many women's sensibilities can be variable depending on the uh, wealth and status of the man they're with. And uh, so, you know, if she's a gold digger, she's not going to be as worried about how he behaves. Yeah. And so, I mean, you had that and then you had uh, just about every, don't forget. every uh, campaign had something going on, Yeah, you know, at all of the uh, don't congressional forget the... campaigns that were highly contested. And then you had the Kavanaugh situation, yep, the Kavanaugh situation, which brought the Clarence Thomas situation back up because of the uh, sort of the, the echoes there. And if you go back to the Clarence Thomas a- uh, accusation, that was another one where the accusation bore an odd resemblance to uh, a media production. It wasn't law and order. If I remember right, the uh, thing under discussion was a porn movie. Everything that she said apparently came out of a porn movie. Um, but that was that was actually a very similar thing. And there were there have been several accusations from women that have been made public that have uh, that have been, against politicians or or basically used as weapons in politics that have turned out to be awfully similar to yeah. various television or movie rape stories and uh so i mean we're getting to the point now i think where the 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 regular public not the rabid democrat or rabid republican end of things but the actual your 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 average citizen is, is going to be hearing rape allegation and they're going to be like, is this another made up allegation to get to a, I, can I just hear what the guy stands for or what the gal stands for that's running for office and, and vote based on that, you know, and, and no, they're, they're not going to get anywhere with making allegations like that. Yeah. And we're getting to the point where they're going to, uh, destroy their own push for guilty until proven innocent so in in a way this is awful to say but in a way the fact that this is happening all these allegations are coming out and all these people are are uh, in in the midst of political elections all these people are demonstrating just how uh weaponized a rape allegation can be it's gonna end up blowing up in their faces it can be good for us and that it will give us fodder for uh pushing for for better uh adherence to due process in the court system and for more accountability when an accusation is is proved to be a lie um not a mistake but a lie and in in many of these cases it's really been proved to be a lie uh so I guess that's basically my take on it. I hate that it's happening. Uh, It's a rotten, horrible thing to do to anyone. And, you know, my heart goes out to everybody that's facing these allegations. And, Mm -hmm. of course, everybody that's faced one and not been famous and not had the media to dig into it and go, this is bullshit. Um, But hopefully, out of all of this, the silver lining will be that, you know, we can write our representatives and we can write our... our, uh, state attorney generals and so on and and get them to understand this is ridiculous it can't be allowed to continue you know accused deserve their due process rights and uh uh these individuals who are doing this uh we deserve recourse against this this waste of our system and the accused deserve recourse against their accusers yes and just like as you've often said, Hannah, the um, 
grab her by the pussy thing is is treated like some kind of misogyny allegation when really as you've often said it's just a description of how some women come eat gold diggers and recently even the dalai lama has, oh, has come into right. some controversy because he said if if i came back as a woman i'd want to be an attractive woman and people took this as a, as an offensive thing when really what he was saying was attractive women are more privileged than not unattractive women which is very bloody true which no one could possibly deny unless they really got themselves tied in knots he was saying you know attractive people are more uh privileged than non-attractive people and with women the gulf is a little bit wider yeah. considerably wider actually like attractive women have lots and lots of privileges pre pretty much all of them and then mm -hmm. some change whereas ugly women arguably in some cases not legally but socially you know i i, I i'm treated a bit like men <laughs> Yeah, I, I can't believe that what the Dalai Lama said is at all controversial. It's so obvious. And look, who, if you believed in reincarnation and you, we could talk about what we would like to come back as, who wouldn't say they'd like to come back as an attractive person? Like, I mean, whether he said, you know, whether it's about a woman or not, who wouldn't say that? Who said, oh, I want to come back as an ugly person? Nobody says that. that it's like, it's a completely what? like non-controversial statement. What I still don't understand is is where is why he came out with this statement of did he say if I were to come back as a woman or did he actually say do you know what I would like to come back as a woman no I because if it that's was... how this conversation started then he's doing exactly what gender studies departments tell him to let's replace the Dalai Lama with a woman he's doing the fucking Marvel thing right yeah yeah no, and they're I still think, complaining uh, <laughs> I think he was asked like well what if you reincarnate as a woman could there be a female Dalai Lama or something like that. All right, and, that clears it up a bit. Maybe they asked it because Doctor Who was in the news. Yeah. <laughs> oh, then they're mad because he didn't he didn't give them the answer they wanted. He uh, he theorized if I came back as a woman, I'd like to come back. This is kind of a way of avoiding the question. Yeah. Still, I mean, so what? Anyway, though, we're that's a bit off topic, but yeah, nonetheless, uh, they they're freaking out because the, the Dalai Lama said something completely. Like, I mean, this is news like that. I, I can't even describe how dumb it is that people were reacting. Like there was a, there was a follow up like every, interview. Every comedian has done this bit. If I were a woman, I'd want to be a hot woman. Yeah. yeah no shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I mean, obvious. But and yet feminists are crawling out the woodwork to attack the Dalai Lama for being sexist, for essentially saying attractive people have privilege. And what is the point of this fat acceptance movement other than fucking pre beautiful people have privilege like how can they fit this much double think up the, <laughs> oh. yeah exactly all right well anyway uh with that said we will follow up i do have one last thing i want to say though uh paul joseph watson you made a mistake it's not law and order sport utility vehicle suv it's law and order svu i know you got it right down here but up here it's wrong it's not sport utility vehicle okay Anyway, um, uh, I don't know, Brian. There, there are a lot of spinoffs with that show. So <laughs> yeah, no, saying. it's Sport True. Utility Vagina. Get it right. Yeah, yeah. How how many uh, who songs are there? That's how many shows there are. All right. Well, anyway, uh, moving on to the next story, we're going to be talking about Andy Neo. So, Mr. J, if you could please. Well, certainly, Brian. Over the weekend of the 29th, during a scheduled march held by the conservative group, the Proud Boys. Masked individuals flying the Antifa banner intercepted the event. The black-clad group identified as Rose City Antifa vastly outnumbered the Proud Boys. We're, we're talking something crazy here, like a couple hundred to a couple dozen, uh, and quickly took control of the area as police turned a blind eye to their actions. Police and passersby found themselves at the target of the mob's anger as the, they attacked them with makeshift weapons, batons, raw eggs, and milkshakes. Journalist and Portland resident Andy Nyo was viciously attacked when he was identified by the group. In a widely circulated clip, Nyo can be seen being beaten by Antifa members wielding weighted gloves or metal poles and an unknown liquid thought to be milkshake, but was later identified by Portland police as quick drying cement, which, if that already sounds bad enough, 
it gets worse when you realize that uh, quick drying cement it's is caustic. Uh, uh, it's a caustic yes, material. Yes, it, it's yeah. basically a type of acid. Yeah, this was essentially a chemical weapon attack, uh, an individual personal chemical weapon attack. But it's not like they haven't been using fucking pepper spray for years anyway, and the, the, the people who are supposed to prevent chemical warfare have never stepped in. I don't know who's people, what people, the UN, NATO, that, those sort of cunts. What are you actually for if not to prevent chemical warfare? Pepper guys? spray is legal in most places. However, using shit like bear mace isn't, so that's a tiny bit different. Hmm. Yeah, but, there's still, you can use different types of pepper spray. Uh, there's only a few types that are illegal. And you can carry, like, you can buy pepper spray uh, that's that's just cayenne pepper spray. You can buy that at, uh, at, at department stores all over the place here. Yeah. I don't carry it because... If an assailant is actually tougher than me, tough enough to, to, to physically subdue me to where I would need pepper spray, an assailant can take it against me and use it use it on me. So there's no point in having it. It's just giving them a weapon. All right, go uh, ahead, Mike J. In addition to the assault Neil faced, he also had several pieces of camera equipment stolen from him as well. No was later admitted to a local hospital with multiple contusions, a very nasty black eye, and he was eventually admitted overnight for what is now officially a brain hemorrhage, a.k.a. brain bleeding. Since the attack, lawyer and former vice chairwoman of the Republican or California Republican Party, Harmeet Delon, has vowed to represent Neo in uh, what I can only guess is an upcoming lawsuit although they haven't announced any specific plans quite just yet. Conservative author uh, Michelle Malkin has also set up a GoFundMe page on Neo's behalf to raise money for his medical bills and to replace his stolen equipment. In just two days, the fundraiser has collected $169,346, although uh, I think Brian has a more updated number there. Uh, $170,206. And let me point. go ahead and check the live the live site real quick. Yeah, uh, 175829 mm -hmm. So this guy's really gaining a lot of traction on there, and, you know, good for him. Yeah. Having said that, don't go to Portland, folks. You are not safe. <laughs> they, they don't like outsiders. They don't like you bastards come in with your wrong thing. Even the mayor, by the way, has, has suicidally gone to Twitter to try and get all apologetic, and he's been ratioed up the asses quite glorious yeah that mayor needs to be sacked I, I, I almost said some murderous things there but he needs to be replaced is uh is what i will say Do you know he's also the chief of police yeah he's no also way. the commissioner yeah he's both he's the commissioner and the mayor so this is the reason why the police didn't help they they um you know they're working for the mayor and the mayor is sympathetic to antifa uh portland is a bigger shit show than you know previously uh thought so strikes me as a conflict of interest there the uh the chief executive of the city also being in charge of the cops i mean if he turns out to be corrupt in any way shape or form who's going to arrest him turns out to be corrupt gonna, <laughs> you know obviously we've we we're seeing the result of that here yeah, the I question mean, is, who is going to arrest him now? Yeah, like, right fucking now. <laughs> who's going to arrest him? Well, certainly not the cops of the city that he's where he's in charge of the cops. So, obviously, now this needs to be, uh, as, you know, obviously goes up the chain. Um, even though the chain doesn't go directly from the cops to the FBI, uh, it, it, it certainly needs to be looked into at least by the state attorney general. Uh, mm -hmm. And like, geez, I cannot imagine a city set up like that. That's insane. No wonder this shit's happening. I know. We're going to be talking about this on, on HBR Talk um, a, a little more in depth because there are some, there's a few implications here for the men's rights movement. And we kind of, we kind of predicted this, not this location and, and this particular victim. But we did kind of, kind of talk about the fact that when the milkshaking started it had to be understood. 
you never can tell what's in the container that they're throwing on you, right? So you have to take it seriously every time. And all the people that were poo-pooing the, you know, seriousness of getting milkshaked, really, all they have to do is put something like this in it and, you know, look at his face, look at what happened under his eye. That could have been in his eye. You know, that could have blinded Absolutely. him. Mm-hmm. That could have gone and, in. And for anyone, and for anyone who's trying to, 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 uh, to take some solace, some refuge in the idea that <clears throat> quite a lot of these Antifa folks will have accidentally, you know, because they were handing out milkshakes, some of them will have accidentally drank cement mix and probably gone to the hospital with hideous belly pains. But at the end of the day, that's just more pain caused, ladies and gentlemen. And we don't want more pain caused, or even to idiots drinking cement mix. <laughs> yeah. Well, and they're, they most certainly, like the videos showed them handling this stuff. And I didn't see any personal protective gear. Um, I, I'm I'm guessing some of them probably got skin burns too. But the biggest thing is, uh, when you throw liquid in somebody's face, you are surprising them, right? And and you can get this stuff in your lungs. You can get this stuff up your nose. Um, this the the brain hemorrhage though that is probably from something they hit him with. Um, and. Off the top of my head, I can't think of the name of it, but there is a type of club that Antifa has been seen to carry that it's it's got a solid handle and then a flexible like stick part. And at the top, then there's something hard and heavy. And it's a particular type of club. Talk about an asp? No. Well, it might also have that name. Uh, but basically what it does is you don't have to – you just flick your wrist a little bit. You don't have to really move with that to build up um some some serious force with the hard piece at the end and they've they've hit like the the guy that was a uh a left winger protesting something uh with a flag he had been carrying a flag and they thought he must be on the other side because he had a flag which tells you a lot about antifa he had an american flag so they attacked him and they hit him in the head with that uh and it it really you could hear it um, very loudly, you could hear it knock him in the head. They're carrying some some serious weaponry, and uh, you know, I just for uh, people are given all kinds of informal names. There is a specific, I, and if you look on uh, Thomas Wichter's channel, he's the one that I actually first saw it point out what that was because they had it covered with a uh, with an Antifa flag, so it looked like they were just hitting him with a a stick or something um but i i'm wondering if if andy no got hit with one of those well you can you can clearly see in the footage uh, i forget who did a really good breakdown of this but there's one floating around there they pause like a timestamp of a of fist flying at him and you can clearly see the person is wearing weighted gloves that have carbon fiber knuckles on them and that'll do the job pretty nicely that'll that'll definitely yeah, that makes split sense. your skull yeah I saw. Yeah, there doesn't seem to be any any weapon that Antifa have in common because they're completely decentralized at this point. I think they've been essentially decentralized the whole point. So there's nothing they have in common, but you know, between any continent or any you know city or whatever, they they grab whatever they they can to use as a weapon that won't get confiscated by the police as a weapon that has enough sort of plausible deniability for the police to say, well, it wasn't really a weapon. It's not like they're working together, like they clearly are in Portland. In most places, they aren't working together, mm. but they 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 seem to know like bike locks or whatever else, and you can carry that happens to be able to be used as a weapon. It's like living in a prison, honestly, and is legal. That's the other challenge too. Yeah, uh, and you know it helps when the uh, mayor of your city is also the police commissioner and sympathetic Man. to you. But one other thing I wanted to add, a couple of things. Uh, one is, I saw Andy Neo. He appeared last night, or maybe it was the night before, on uh, Tucker Carlson's after this happened and he got out of the hospital. So this is after all that, and he spoke to him. And Andy Neo may... So the, the brain hemorrhage that he suffered from, he may have survived it, but he's not the same person. His words were very slurred. He had a hard time gathering his thoughts. Um, you know, it was like you would ask him a question and there was a, 
a, a great deal of lag. And I don't mean just because there was like lag between the, you know, uh, Tucker who was in one part of the world and this guy was in another part. I mean, you can tell that he was receiving the information, but it was taking him a while to get started and talking about his experiences. And he wasn't able to, um, uh, let's say he wasn't, he didn't appear to be able to really express himself in uh, as, say, lucid a way as he normally would have. Uh, the guy is not the same person as he was. If you look at his old conversations before this happened and now. And I think that, that's, that that tells you something that's very important. Because people will say, well, you know, he didn't die. But he's not the same. And it's obvious that this sort of stuff only happens with Antifa. Any other, like when, if you look at the way the mainstream media, and this is like the overwhelming majority of the media has reported on this story, it is infuriating because they describe it as Proud Boys and Antifa clash in Portland, as though both of them showed up for a fight and it was even, and you know, it just so happened that sparks started flying when, as Mike J described it, there were far more people belonging to Antifa that were there. Like, what was it? Maybe 10 to 1 or something? It, 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 roughly, Poland, yeah. They like had a, a few hundred. To one. And they <laughs> had, uh, the Proud Boys were maybe a couple dozen. Yeah. And the Proud Boys were the ones that had the permit for the march, which, yeah. from what I've seen, had to be canceled because of they knew this was going to be a problem. Yeah. And then they got canceled, and then uh, Antifa was like, well, shit, we still want to kill some people. So they took over the area, and this yeah. is what happened. And there's still there's the <clears throat> as yet unnamed white haired sort of bearded guy who ended up with a completely bloated oh, face yeah. from the crowbar. Oh, yeah, that, he, that, he was, that old guy, was, yeah, he got his exactly. face smashed in with a crowbar, and it's like, you can see the picture. It looks like a horror movie. Yeah. And, and I, they still say, well, Antifa's never killed anyone. They fucking tried. It's not like it's not, they couldn't have killed anyone. Trying. They've, no. they've con consistently tried, but then you get the, what I would perhaps deign to ironically call a whataboutism. Well, at least they don't, they don't like... Just go into mosques and shoot up a bunch of people. Yeah, well, you no, know, because they have a crowd to join. Like the fucking right wing wing nuts have no crowd to join, so they have to go out on their own. So the only ones you hear about are the ones with the fucking weapons to do shit. Whereas fucking communist extremists don't have to go out on their own. They can find a big old crowd of other very violent thugs in their area because Antifa is. There's probably a chapter in more cities than there isn't at this point. Absolutely. And the last thing I want to say about Antifa is the reason why this comes up is it's very important for you guys to know Antifa is a feminist organization. They are feminists. That's like they're lots of things. They are, they are lots, lots of things, things, but that's a big part of it because they are it's it's almost like like the there's a there is a strong progressive ideology at the center of it they may say you know we're anarchists and all that but if you look at the rhetoric if you go to the website there's an antifa communist party in chicago don't worry the icmi will be nowhere near it and th they don't want to like spend the time and money and effort it would take to find us anyway but um that's a reason why we're keeping the address secret as well they are progressives they are in part they they embrace that feminist ideology. They're it's a big part of what they are. Let's so put it that way, okay? And I think that it's um it's important to know because there is a difference between people who want to change the world by forcing everyone to do things their way and people who want to make the world better by freeing uh people from a system that wants to force them to do things their way. And I think that to be to be as charitable as I can, I think that Antifa believes, um, and be, that's because they're you know they're not thinking and they're just drones that work for whoever's uh, supporting them. They believe that what they're doing is right. Uh, obviously, they aren't right, but they believe that. And I think that it's to to uh, sort of comment on what Mike uh, Dr. Randomcan was saying about how you know they're they're probably like hurting themselves as well as other people and this is not what we want like i don't want obviously more suffering i don't want bad things to happen to antifa i don't think it will 
I mean, like, as in, like, you know, people, like, responding to them with more violence. Um, I don't think it's going to change anything. I think the problem is, is that their ideas are making them violent. Like, the reason why they're violent is because they believe that what they're experiencing in terms of people's languages, people's beliefs, people's desire to um, create, like, a, a freer society with less government and all that, they think those things are violence. They're trying to get ahead of what they believe to be fascist violence and they and of course in order to do that they have to they have to use fascist violence <laughs> so um i say like this i've been to, saying uh, like we've been saying to the or uh, regarding the so-called anti-sjw community for some time calling calling yourself anti something is not a good idea it's not a productive idea it's not a sustainable idea because if if you identify as anti something you'll just create a vacuum it's going to be filled by something else. Like anti SJWs are going to be filled on the left and on the right, mm -hmm. the other people. And like, needless to say, this message also goes out to Antifa. Because if you base essentially identify as Antifa, as anti fascist, what's going to fill that vacuum? That would be communism. Exactly. So that's what we're looking at. You know? By the way, the device that I was trying to think of earlier, it's called a trench, trench club. Um, and there's actually video of it. If you uh, if you look up Antifa uses a trench club uh, on on YouTube, you'll find it. Um, and it's it looks similar to that. The thing that they had looked like it was a little more flexible than that looks like it is. That looks like uh, and it, it just whipped around. And with something heavy like that at the end, um, being able to to hit somebody with that. Without you, you don't look like you're really doing anything. Uh, I, Antifa. One of the things that I've noticed is they they seem to be starkly divided between people don't know people who don't know what the hell they're doing and they're getting like arrested and and uh, filmed and all kinds of stuff. And then another core bunch of them that is not just militant but militarized, very organized, using hand signals that. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm sure I'm not the only one that has seen them before, but uh, I'm, I'm echoing. Hey Brian, you're echoing. I am. Okay, you, hold they're, on. Yeah, they're using hand signals to communicate with each other. They're using weapons that they can use covertly and do a lot of damage. Um, they're organized. They are doing, uh, they're doing things that they would do if they were soldiers in a war, right? And they're picking targets too. Not just not just in this case, but in other cases. Uh, so they allow, I think, people who are um, maybe a little more rabid and a little little more headstrong uh, and a little less wise about what they're doing to get involved, so that those people will get caught and people will take Antifa less seriously. But don't make that mistake. And if you hear of an Antifa process. Uh, uh, not process, but uh, protest where you where you are. Don't get involved. You know, let let the cops deal with it. This is definitely not something to mess with. And I know the cops are standing back, but that's going to be on them. You know, and if it happens in your area, and and the cops do stand back, then the thing to do is afterwards start getting in touch with officials in your area and finding out why. Who gave that order? Because they don't stand down in the face of crime unless they're told they have to. It's not why they go into police work. So, so that's it. Yeah. Um, and and Taryn, Taryn Marine said it's like a police whip baton. Uh, so that that's basically like that's what you're up against. Uh, you're up against people who are going to hide militarized violence behind uh, organized chaos. That's kind of scary. All right. Uh, I'm going to read the super chats, but first I'm going to hang up and come back in the call to see if the echo goes away. Cause uh, I didn't change any settings and that seems to work when I do that. So I'll be right back guys. Hold on just a second. All right. I'm back. Uh, let me share my screen again. With you guys, uh, are you still getting an echo? Uh, well, well, you're good at the moment. All right, cool. Nope, no echo. It worked. 
Excellent. Also, All right. real quick, uh, the one to watch for next time is um, July 6th in D.C. There's going to be a free speech rally. And uh, Antifa has already said they're going to have a presence at that. Yeah, and there's even one guy who was allegedly Antifa. I mean, there hasn't been any confirmation yet because, I mean, that's just the nature of the group. But he, this guy very, very brazenly uh, said to a conservative uh, telegram channel that he plans to bring a muriatic acid and wax and wants to blind as many people as possible. Yeah, and apparently I heard about DHS, that. the FBI did treat it as a credible threat and are going to be posting more security because of it. There you go. Okay. If, if, your, if your life involves going on the internet, folks, do not go anywhere where there's a risk of being blinded. Because in case you haven't put two and two together, you cannot use a fucking computer if you're blind. Don't they make... Not without... Well, uh, yeah, they do, but I was going to say, not without expensive software that will read everything out loud for you. Yeah, that's no fun. But just don't don't go someplace where you you could get blinded. Just try to avoid that. Uh, okay, so we got some super chats. Zerinx gives us five bucks and says, "Did you see AOC's accusation on border officers? It's like there is really no thinking there." Oh no! At the uh, you're talking about when AOC said that they were making the women the women at the border that they had detained drink from toilets um, so that they can get their water. It's 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 absolutely ridiculous. Look. Just ignore what she says. It's dumb. She She's just trying to rile people up. Uh, there's no way that that's happening. That's just retarded. Thomas Lacroix gives us $2 Canadian and says, at least it's not battery acid. Right, Joe Brand? I mean, it's close. <laughs> Concrete is caustic. Yeah. So, you know, uh, or quick drying cement, rather. Uh, it's not yeah, good. It's, it's... it's not good. It's not battery acid yet. But the thing about quick drying cement is it's, it's only slightly more caustic than, say, chlorine bleach like you would get at the store to use in your laundry. And the problem with it is, one of the problems with it is, you don't know it's burning you until after the damage is done. Because mm -hmm. it's not so caustic that you feel it right away. And so by the time you're aware that you've had a caustic substance dumped on you and it started burning you, you are already suffering damage. And there, there are guys, there are serious injuries that have happened on construction sites because guys have gotten it in their boots and they didn't know, or they've gotten it in their gloves and they didn't know. And it can cause like lost time, work injury, and all kinds of things. There's even a uh, specific uh, protocol for dealing with that with OSHA that it happens that often. It's, it's really a lot more dangerous than people think. And that's kind of the problem with bleach as well. By the time you feel it itching, it's already way too late. You know? Oh, uh, Zaring Skip gave, me, gave us five bucks and said uh, no. So it's not about that. It's something else. AOC said CBP. So uh, Border Patrol aggressed her, uh, aggressed on her physically and sexually. So she made a sexual accusation. Well, um, you know, uh, either take it to the cops or shut the fuck up. That's what I say. So if that yeah, happens, I'm, I'm going to have my doubts just because that woman is scarier than they are. Yeah, I, I, I doubt it. I mean, I'm sorry, but take it to the cops or shut the fuck up. That's all I'm going to say about that. And I, and I bet you, I bet you that you won't hear anything else about this. She's not going to follow up. She's not going to like go to the police. It's just something that she's just putting out there because she wants to make border patrol look as bad as possible. And then we're not going to hear anything else about it when it does not stick. So please keep on making false accusations. Uh, whoever, keep doing it. Wear everybody out. Go ahead. And then, well, we'll just watch all of the feminists that are trying to debunk MRAs and, and um, you know, red pill documentaries when they say, well, they say that, that uh, false accusations are really rare, but... That's not the case. Well, it's not going to work out for you if, if people keep on lying. So please keep lying. I'm pressing X to doubt on that. Okay. Concentrate, folks. Fucking concentrate. And if you can't, go to some kind of camp. <laughs> okay, uh, Mike J, if you could. Let's go to the next story. I'm I, Andy Nyo, I hope that you recover and I hope you sue the shit out of those people. Oh, that was one other thing I wanted to bring up was um, this uh, Harmeet K. Dillon. I hope I'm not butchering her name. Oh, that's but actually 
I, I looked at the H in there. I'm like, oh, that can't be how it's said. But no, it's That's just right. Dylan. Okay. So Harmeet K. Dillon, the lawyer for Andy Nyo, she put this tweet out that I want to read because I thought it was awesome. She said, good night, everyone, except Antifa criminals who I plan to sue into oblivion and then sow salt into their yoga studios and avocado toast stands until nothing grows there. Not even the glimmer of a violent criminal conspiracy aided by the effete impotence of a cowed city government. So I will, I, I, I'm just like, I'm that I feel the same. Thank you. Now that's a good lawyer. That's a I lawyer. like avocados. I, I like avocados too. I, I hate that, that, uh, that, uh, you know, Portland ruined avocados for me, but they didn't. I, I, I still like them, but I thought that was a great, a great quote. Um, I lost something. Sorry. My YouTube crashed for some reason, but I'm still, I think I'm still live. So I'm. Uh, are you guys still? Yeah, we're still live. It was just YouTube just crashed for some reason. That was strange. YouTube, stop fucking with us. Okay. Anyway, next story. Mike J, if you could. Mike J, oh, Discord crashed. Well, that's odd. Okay, hold on a second. Just waiting for it to open. Um, <laughs> it's fucking. What the fuck. It's like, it's a pain in the ass to run this show, I swear. I guess it's asking too much for my machine. Ah, yes, hello. We, I, I heard your computer go off, and then all sound at my end. I lost all sound at my end, so. Oh, well, Were no. you still able to hear yeah. me? No, I, I, I dropped my Discord closed suddenly, and it wasn't an update. It just closed. So, whatever, ah. it crashed. But I'm back. So, is everyone else still there? This is. This is why they count down to technical difficulties before the shows. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I, I don't, I don't know. I, 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 I do everything I can, but shit still happens. It does, it doesn't make any sense. Anyway, um, so Mike J, are you there? Yeah, hello. I can't hear him. I can't hear you. It looks like he's trying to talk. That is that better? Yeah, there yeah. you go. There you are. Okay. All right. Well, that was weird. Okay, so uh, are you ready for the next story? I am ready. All right, let's do it. So it's a bit of a lengthy one, but it's got a couple of girthy quotes in here. Just wanted to make sure uh, nobody got misrepresented. There's also, and I will announce it when it comes up, a few kind of iffy translations because this is all in, uh, what are they speaking? Brazil, Portuguese. So... Not everything kind of translates one for one. You kind of got to read between the lines. With that out of the way, though, uh, Gabriel Catuso, a Brazilian Twitch streamer with a decent-sized following, has been dropped from a sponsorship jill after going on an anti-male Twitter tirade. It all started when the girl gamer posted an image to her social media of her riding a mechanical bull with the saucy caption, I am writing the chat. This isn't anything new for Katuzo. She's made similar suggestive comments in the past. But when a Twitter user commented on her post stating, quote, you can ride me anytime, the streamer fired back, not only at the user, but at all men in general, stating, quote, there's always going to be some fucked in the head macho man to talk shit and sexualize women until the women starts making jokes back, right? And this is why men are trash kind of a weird leap but you know okay you you. like you literally put yourself out there sexually on purpose to your audience and when one guy flirts with you which you totally dangled out there it's like she's like an angler fish you know you dangle out that light bulb in front of all these others in the and then when one person approaches one little fishy approaches you bite his head off and then you blame him for it and all the other fish, but okay. Go ahead. And you complain about macho men in some way, which, by the way, is the equivalent of bossy women. Can you imagine, like, a male stripper complaining about bossy women? <laughs> That's par for the course in that kind of crowd. <laughs> like, yeah. Um... Okay, go ahead, Mike. So when a fan suggested that she didn't need to generalize all men in such a manner, she angrily doubled down, stating that, and this is the one I really couldn't find a very clean translation for, but this is effectively what she said, uh, stating that 
uh, she did not. She did need to generalize because men attack her the first chance they get. Men who weren't uh, shit were the exception, not the majority, and that generalization was needed to point it out to them. Fan response was inevitable and quick, but not towards Catuso. Instead, fans began to alert her sponsor, Razer, which is a company which makes PC gaming peripherals, if you didn't know, uh, to her poor behavior. Three days after the drama started, the Brazilian branch of Razer issued a statement on the situation in which they announced that they were ending Catuso's sponsorship. They also stated, quote, We would like to make it clear that Gabby is not a spokesperson for Razer and has never been a brand ambassador. She was part of a team of influencers who were called upon to use and publicize the brand's products. Razer Brazil reinforces that the opinion of its influencers does not reflect necessarily the opinion of the business, which is totally against any type of discrimination, be it of sex, religion, political party, or whatever type of intolerance, or whatever type of intolerance and extremism. Following Razer's statement, Catuzo announced that she'd be taking a break from social media. In a twit longer post, she walked back her more inflammatory messages stating, quote, My intention with this phrase was, whenever I put something in which I leave 1% of a gap to be made a bad joke, a lot of men go and do it. The intention was never to be misinterest, much less to curse all the men, even because I said there were exceptions. I do not usually respond to the person when they put something offensive. I just ignore or block, and I follow life. I'm guessing that means I, like, I just go on with my life. Uh, but in that case, and on that day, I burst and made the unfortunate comment, which was interrupted or in, interpreted. interpreted even more unhappily by many. This is this is so infuriating. You you get these younger, uh, highly attractive women Fox. who want, yeah, they want the trained beast. They don't want actual human beings in their men. They want to be able to walk right up to the the edge of the no go zone, and and you know stick their tits over the line, and not get touched and not get talked about and not have anyone stare. Right, even though the whole goal is to get the guy so worked up that he responds the way she does want, which is to donate to her Patreon and cre increase her visibility, get her the kind of attention from companies like Razor that she had where she was being asked to use their products and probably paid. Um, or at least she was getting free products, which in my opinion is a form of getting paid. Uh, and this, this is bullshit, okay? It's not feminine. It's not... Uh, <sighs> I, I mean, it is feminine. It's it's toxic femininity, essentially. But it's not admirably feminine to tease guys and then castigate them for responding because they didn't respond entirely, exactly, precisely, 100% in the way that you wanted and only in the way that you wanted. Yeah, and the guy who made That's that comment, I, I mean, there's no... It's highly unlikely that he thought... I'm going to say you can ride me anytime and she's going to immediately jump on my dick. He probably put that in thinking this would be funny. And yeah, it was actually a little bit cringy because it's so obvious, but like that response that she had completely disproportionate and is exactly right. Like you said, it's a case where women want to be able to do whatever they like on social media, whatever it is they want to do, whether it's, you know, uh, just whatever. And then when they, when they do sexual things or even when they don't, when they do comedy, when they play music, when they try to sing, when they put out photos of their cats, whatever it is. But what happens is they want absolute control over how people respond to what is put out there. And if they don't get it that way, then they like blow up at everyone and they act like the world is against them and they have to lash out. It's like, how old are you? She's she's gonna get a an advertising concept contract with Gillette. I'm calling it now. <laughs> <laughs> but having the name's Razor, folks. Oh, I did oh. hear, hear that rolling laughter. Well, there the is world. the fee, there is the female body positive version of the Razor too. 
Um, but there is one uh, thing I do want to say about this. I actually would not want this to happen to her. I don't think people should lose their livelihoods because they said something, you know, out of anger on social media. I don't think that people's behavior on social media should actually um, impact their job. So I know that people are going to say Razor is a company. They can do whatever they like. I get it. But like as a principal, I don't like this, that this happened to her. I don't think this should happen to anyone personally. So I'm, it's a shame. And yes, people are using the weapons that, uh, you know, a lot of like SJWs use against people who don't toe the line with them. But I don't want us to go in that direction. I don't, I don't want this to get worse in that way. I don't think this is the right way to go. So I actually hope that, you know, she gets like, I, I just wish that didn't happen to her. I don't think that this is going to teach her anything. She's not going to learn anything from this. She's just going to become bitter because people have done this to her, right? So I don't. Yeah, I word, don't the word on the street was this isn't this isn't the first time she's kind of flown off the handle and made remarks similar to this. Yeah, and so, this is one of the things that uh, goes along with being attractive. Um, it's people tolerate behavior from you that they wouldn't tolerate if you were less attractive. And you become accustomed to being able to engage in that kind of behavior. And you incrementally increase it or escalate it until you hit a point where it becomes intolerable, even if you're pretty or even if you're very handsome. And, uh, you know, then, then you suddenly get smacked down and you don't know why. Right. You like, what did I do? All I did was, you know, enforce my boundaries or whatever. And, and the next thing you know, you're resentful uh, and this that's basically what you know there's sort of going to be a cycle for her if she doesn't learn anything from this there's sort of going to be a cycle for her until she ages out of the uh the part of the cycle where people put up with her shit because she's pretty and and then all of a sudden there won't be that part and it'll be you can't get away with anything Mm-hmm. well anyway those are my thoughts on on that i i um i get it that you know people were it was like uh, there were a lot of people that were kind of having a bit of schadenfreude over this um i understand it is it, it can be interesting to see someone that's actually like engaging in misandry and having that being recognized as misandry but i don't think people should be punished for misandry in this way i don't think people should be punished for misogyny either because we have a difficult time defining those terms and i think the punishments are too severe so i uh, i'm actually not on board with this kind of justice let's put it that way and i get it you know pe she's a brand ambassador razor is the brand they don't want negativity associated with their brand it's kind of like firing an employee that's not doing a good job i get that but um i guess on principle i just i'm just not on the side of this being like a way in which we should conduct ourselves when responding to uh, people who engage in this kind of rhetoric. So, social she, media she just, mobs, in other words, yeah, are a bad social thing. media mob, yeah, exactly. This call out culture, social media mobs, canceling people, bullshit. I don't like it. If if she puts like what I would prefer is that people grew some balls and just dealt with comments that they don't love. Because that's where it's going. It's not even just like comments that they hate or comments that are hateful towards them. It's comments that they don't love. If not every single person who says something about you is saying something that you like in the specific way that you think that they should, because I imagine someone saying you can ride me anytime isn't saying that they hate you isn't saying that they have a problem with you because you're a woman. They're actually saying that they like you but you, they're just not saying it in a way that you think that they should. I think that that is where people need to shift their brains. We need to like move away from this idea that you can absolutely control your audience. I mean, I see this with, um, uh, well, I'm just going to call them thoughts. I see this with thoughts all over the internet. 
Like they post pictures of themselves of doing things or short videos. If they get any negative comments, then they like they they fall into deep depression. They go out and they complain and they rant because they're not getting look for your own sanity. Grow a spine and deal with it. This is the real this is the real world. If you put your images out there, you're going to get attention and it's not always going to be in the exact way that you think it should be because other people are doing things their way so and if it's if it's if it's attention you want if it's youtube fame you want then here's a uh, <clears throat> a video format that quite a lot of popular youtubers use quite a lot go through your hates just go through your your, your hate comments one by one just sort of so show show them to your audience laugh at them and go <laughs> and like that and and you get another video out of it. You will get loads more revenue out of that video, and boom, you got you got more productivity. You don't even need to block anyone. You don't even need to mute anyone. You can even turn them into puppets. There's all kinds mm -hmm. of things you can do if you just listen to people instead of just fucking blocking them. I think the fun part is when people do that and they read the angry comments in an angry voice and somebody has misspelled something and they, they read it the way that it was spelled. Um, it's, it's, those videos are some of the best videos on YouTube, actually. Yeah. Uh, but I, I want to point out women that, young women that, that, that want to be able to flirt like that really need to go back and watch Mae West and how she did it. Because girls today don't know how to do that. Like, they just don't. And, you know, in that situation, like, if that was a situation in person, and she said something like that, and she's got, uh, you know, a crowd around her like that, uh, and a guy says in response, you can ride me anytime, Mae West would have looked at him, you know, kind of sideways, maybe given herself a little jiggle and said, well, I'll keep that in mind. And then she would have turned away and started talking to somebody else. And that would have been the it. There would have been no further uh, contact or issue. And she would have gotten a quip out of it. And yeah. uh, like, gals today do not know how to do that. They don't think on their feet. Uh, they, they aren't really trying to flirt. They aren't really trying. Like you wear a shirt that shows your tits and you say a few things and you play a few video games. They're not really trying. You know, yeah. half of what maybe even more than half of what made Mae West sexy. Because, I mean, she was pretty, but she wasn't necessarily the kind of drop-dead gorgeous that people remember her as. If you go back and look, and she continued to be sexy even as she aged. She exuded confidence, and, and she took everything in stride. And uh, she never was mean, you know, she didn't she didn't say turn around and say things like how about never a clock you know um it was always it, leaving things open ended right she didn't she wasn't a thought but she also wasn't rude and for some reason young women today don't have a in between there where they can be flirty and then be open ended and not necessarily and non committal in terms of it and not necessarily uh stand up for themselves they're not confident they just don't know what to do yeah good points all around be more like may west what would may west do just put that on a bumper sticker that reeve guy so a couple super chats actually you know I, i'm sorry i got one before that uh tyler preston gives us two bucks and says thanos was right humanity was a mistake that's not perfectly balanced uh, that Reeve guy gives us 50 Kronas and says, sounds like you need to apply the correct rituals to appease the machine spirit, Brian. I don't know why that happened. I do everything in my power to make sure everything running is running as efficiently as possible. And the, somebody's still rolling dice up there. So, and Wait, Did the same guy say those two things? Because it sounds no. like we've got ourselves a singularitarian here. Uh, like no. Humanity uh -huh. was a mistake that but the machines are in charge. I see where you're coming from. Sunshine. <laughs> no, those are two different uh, people, but that is really kind of serendipitous. Uh, Anth Bobo gives us $2 Canadian and says men need to stop giving these women attention. Yeah, that. well, that's, uh, that's the thing, though. Uh, a lot of young guys watch this stuff. And um, the, like 
especially these young, you know, thoughts on Instagram and Twitch and stuff. It's super effective on young guys. You know, they don't know any better. And a lot of them give up a lot of money too. So I agree. They, they need, they need some self-respect and then this wouldn't happen. Or at least what it wouldn't happen as often. All right. Well, anyway, so we're going to, oh, and also kind of like it kind of further validates the thing that we were talking about earlier with Dalai Lama as, uh, you know, uh, attractive people do have privilege and attractive women, most of all. Okay. So moving on to the next story. This is the last one. Something I thought I would uh, share with you guys. Uh, I thought this was just amazing. I just thought this was amazing. So I'm going to read this off. And you have to guess what this is. Is it an activist group? A politician's campaign? A video series? What? Okay. So here we go. Mission statement. The goal of this game is to offer an understanding of privilege and give people the tools to create a more empathetic and just world. We've taken an absurdist and satirical approach to reflect the harsh realities of our absurd world. This choice is an effort to create both a cathartic and accessible formula that reaches the widest possible audience of all ideologies. We believe that black lives matter, healthcare is a right, women's rights are human rights, no human is illegal, love is love, gender is not binary, climate change is real, corporations are not people, the earth is round, and a nation is judged by how it treats its most vulnerable people. So what kind of... Wait, so what are the options again? Uh, is this a activist group, a politician's campaign, a video series? Like, what do you think it is? I mean, it doesn't have to be just those. It could be anything else, but... Do you guys give up? Okay, so it is... This is scary. <laughs> this is... You're going to love this. Only, only SJW progressives would have done this, okay? Um... This is a board game that lets your friends actively check your privilege. Unfortunately, though, the creators are white men. Um, <laughs> as white men, this is from the, uh, the game. This is a real thing, okay? They are trying to get a game made, game made called Reality Check, the game of privilege. As white men... Contextually, we may not be the best people to tell this story, but we believe it is a critical story to tell. Of course, we're all a lot more than labels than the labels that are applied to us, but it's important to acknowledge how our circumstances influences influence our viewpoint and agency. We've made a serious I effort. Do, do, I, do, I have to say, I have the weirdest feeling we're dealing with a Jew and a gay here. <laughs> I, I was hello so... fellow straight white man <laughs> <laughs> um yeah i i don't know let's let's see oh Let, uh, where was i oh we have we're all a lot more than the labels applied to us but it's important to acknowledge how our circumstances influence our viewpoint and agency we've made a serious effort to consult and play test with people representing many different perspectives it is our intention to create a fact-based experience without minimizing the challenging realities of marginalized individuals and communities no thanks so oh i have a prediction for this somewhere in that game is going to be something that is going to piss off some victim identity group and that's when the fight will start and then it's going to burn it's you know, all one time they're already getting ratioed because they're white guys making this game i hope you guys know that they're already there might be some <laughs> like, that. there might be some law we can call into place here there's only so long you can privilege women before so, before some feminist shuts you down for being sexist against women somehow <laughs> You know, one time I got really drunk with my friends and we started inventing this game. It's kind of like Rochambeau, but if you lost, you got to shoot the other guy in the junk with an airsoft gun. Wait, and what? And I thought it was a horrible idea then, and we all vowed never to do it again because it was stupid, but I'm not so sure now. Like, that sounds a hundred times better than this thing and less painful. Can you believe that this is? I, I can't believe this. They're actually making this thing. Look at look at look at this. Come into Kickstarter third quarter twenty nineteen. 
Uh, I'm gonna go back to the PowerPoint for a second. On the card, it's uh, there's a card here, so I'm not. I don't know how this game is played, but it says uh, affected game designers. There's nothing worse than sitting in a cafe and laughing at the world's problems. And there's a male symbol there, and it says all cis men players lose your next turn. Ah, uh, that's so fun. That sounds <laughs> amazing. God, I it just. How is this a thing? I like Robert, Robert Michael's comment in chat. You've been accused of sexual assault. Go directly to jail. <laughs> That's here, probably not in the game. I want to look at a couple they things on, on, the, uh, on the website here. This is for the – I have this an archive link. So be the first to complete your life achievements while the game and your friends actively check your privilege. Will you toil with student debt or get stuck in Gitmo? Will you be born into fortune or fall victim to hate? The American dream comes crumbling down in this unforgettable adventure. What? Who is this game for? There's a good one. I want to click on that. Um, oh, jeez. <laughs> it's a real I don't know, game. but something tells me it's going to sell millions and someone's going to fuck five guys to get it to sell millions. <laughs> Uh, I like, look, you know what's great about this? I can look at this image and I can tell you right off the bat who's going to lose in this game. <laughs> <laughs> I already know who the loser. I'm not really sure. Like, I, I, like, if you make it successful and you benefit from white male cis heterosexual privilege, is are you the winner of the game or do you win the game if you're the most oppressed person that you, ends you up You know how at the beginning of I most board games when you pick at the beginning of most board games when you're picking which color piece you want to be like, that's essentially all this game is right <laughs> Yeah right I mean how fast do you solve the, the I think the game is over when you're done picking your character or whatever I mean I, I can imagine that anyway I think it's actually based on your actual like you, so you can't play as, you know, I want to play as a black female um, disabled lesbian Muslim woman. You actually have to play as what you are. So because otherwise it's cultural appropriation or blackface or something, you can't do that. So um, so, if you, so if you're a woman, you have to play as the pink pawn. You can't go, I want to play as the black pawn. No, you can't be the black pawn. The black, bi black guy's got to be the black pawn. You can't be what you feel like being. You've got to be what we say you are. Because <laughs> diversity and inclusion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so th th this, is, this is real. <laughs> oh, it says here. So use this game to make your D&D &D character. <laughs> and then try to survive a campaign. I I just I'm I'm just I can't I can't with this. <laughs> um, is this some liberal SJW propaganda? Yes, of course. There must be something in the water. But in all seriousness, Reality Check is an earnest attempt to communicate the concept of privilege. We've made an effort to offer a facts-based representation of American life. That said, we can't guarantee that we aren't lizard people. Hashtag flat Earth. Okay. Well, anyway, I just thought... You know, I, I still think I know where that airsoft gun is, <laughs> so... I just thought I would share this with you. I don't know if you can play as Antifa in this game. I assume you can, um, but yeah, I, I, just, I just thought I would share... Oh, and let I mean, me this see. Game doesn't result, this game doesn't result in you shooting yourself in the bollocks and sterilizing yourself, but it's the social equivalent of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, there was one other thing I wanted to... Uh, oh, yeah, right. I'm going to go to their Twitter page. So um, it says here some people just don't get it, and this was them trying to, like, you know, create a little bit of hype around, uh, around their game. But... They're here. People are losing it at them. They're getting they're They're not getting a lot of support. Literally every marketing move you've made is a mistake. Not only will your game not not fund, but the very left you pretend to cater to is going to boycott you hard and this foolish shit. Look at all the positive like, responses and reactions you guys are getting. Hi there. White person here. I don't get it. <laughs> so. Yeah. Well, why don't you just play Escape from Colditz? That's a pretty straightforward anti-fascist game. <laughs> <laughs> and it's been around for fucking decades, guys. Your grandparents played this game. Go play Escape from Colditz. It's surprisingly good. 
<laughs> this is just, I, they, I mean, I got nothing else. This is just insane that this is actually a thing that exists. So I just thought I would share it with you guys. Um, let's look at your super chats. Let me know, would you play Reality Check, the game of privilege? It looks expensive. I just want to point that out. Um, okay. So Lauren literally gives us a dollar ninety nine. Hello, Lauren. And she says, can't have an SJW game without oppression points. Yeah, I have a feeling that actually, like, if you're privileged, you're you're the winner. I think that's actually how this works. And everyone else is supposed to shame you for winning, I guess. Gamtaru gives us $2 and says, five straight white men play, game never ends. <laughs> like the ride never ends. What if you show up wearing a... Um, that's what the vast majority of these games are composed of, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> Uh, and Nath Mitch, I hope I'm saying that right, gives us $2 Canadian and says, let me out of my box game. Let me out of my box game. Yeah. So, um, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Just check check out the website. It's uh, hilarious, but it's real. The game of privilege coming to Kickstarter third quarter of 2019. Reality check, ladies and gentlemen. I'm from this weird sort of old school of thought where you play games to escape reality. But here's one. <laughs> <laughs> you check it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Gazi Kodo approves this game. That's right, uh, Aquave, y'all. It's he's he's probably one of the he's on one of the cards. I'm pretty sure. Um, okay, so that's it for the stories. You guys have any final thoughts on any of the other stories presented here? No? All right, so we're going to wrap up the show then. I want to thank you guys for coming on. Uh, in about a half an hour, I'm going to be live on Karen's channel. We're going to be talking to Count Dankula, so please go over there. Um, but if you could, before you do that, could you please hit the like button on this HBR News Show? Hit that like button. It's really great for our analytics. Also, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. I saw we got a couple of subscribers. I want to thank you guys for, for joining the channel. I appreciate that very, very much. I want to make uh, this channel grow at least the same size as Honey Badger Radio is. That would be an amazing achievement. And um, also, leave us a comment. Tell us what you think about any of the stories or all of the stories that we discussed on today's HBR News Show. I always read the comments because I like to see what you guys are thinking. And uh, yeah, with that said, I want to thank uh, Hannah and Mike and Dr. Ranamercamp for coming on the show today and being a part of this amazing experience talking about social justice board games because, because that's what adults do. And I also want to uh, thank you guys, especially for coming and hanging out with us. Otherwise, we'd be talking to no one, and that would be kind of sad. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this show up. Thank you for joining us on the HBR News Show, and we'll talk to you guys in the next one. Have a great day, everybody. Brave.